Some guy came up to me and said, you John Stossel? Yes. I hope you die soon. <laughs> I'm just curious to know how you came to the conclusions that you have. I went to Princeton where I was taught that big government would solve poverty and all other problems, basic socialism 101, and took my first job in Portland, Oregon, and became a consumer reporter. We'd send a TV set around to a bunch of repair shops with a loose tube. And most would just say, oh, loose tube, stick it in. Some would say, oh, we'll have to work on it and charge us 200 bucks. I would then go back and say, hey, would you ever rip people off like this? And they would say, oh, no, never. And I'd say, oh, yeah, well, watch this and play the tape. <laughs> and it was great television. And politicians then called up and said, that was great television. We're going to create a Department of Consumer Affairs to fix this. And so we did the test again. And five years later, same results. Most people were honest. Some people cheated. It made me think, well, what are these regulators doing? So I went to their office, and they had a big office, and there were people filling out forms. And I started to think about it and realize, well, this meant that the immigrant had to learn how to fill out the forms or hire a lawyer. It made everything cost more. It made some people go underground. And then I wandered around and discovered Reason Magazine. David Osgo, I'm with the D Distilled Spirits Council. A friend of mine once said, a journalist. Is this really for real, the Distilled Spirits? <laughs> How come there aren't any it's here It's a real tonight? job, yes. Do you see any hope for journalists? journalists? What has to be done in order for them to be just have a modicum of scientific knowledge so that they can really truly properly interpret uh, reports and other junk science that happens to come out? I don't know. I, I, I mean, I was a psychology student. I always had some interest in science. I never took a journalism course. I just think there's some left brain, right brain thing, and the kind of analytical minds that go into business and science don't go into law and journalism. The people who go into that are like Bill Clinton. I feel your pain. They are the emoters, and they are often clueless about analyzing things. I'm wondering, maybe you didn't have a choice, but because you're associated with that Fox brand, people must really hate you who liked you before, <laughs> liberal friends. Would it have been better if you'd been on MSNBC, um, something counterintuitive? Or did you think about that? I'm curious. Sure, I would have thought about that, but I don't think they would have hired me. I mean, when I came out as a libertarian and thought about what my options were, I thought, who's going to buy this between Republicans and Democrats? I thought, the best shot are the liberals, because the social conservatives, it, you know, if I'm saying homosexuality is fine, or people ought to be able to get high, that just violates their religious principles and they can't bend on that. But the liberals, I ought to, you know, reality, the fall of the Soviet Union, ought to have taught them that their ideas are moronic and they should stop it. There are people in my neighborhood, some guy came up to me and said, you John Stossel? Yes, I hope you die soon. <laughs> Okay, my question, it's about another one of your books. You talk about the price of gasoline compared to the price of ice cream and bottled water. Um, that the price of those food items are actually more than the gasoline. But wouldn't someone argue that people can choose whether or not they want ice cream or if they want bottled water, they could get it from the tap. I mean, they're more limited as to like whether they can have gasoline because we know we need to get to work you know not everyone can ride a bicycle to work and so forth so sure but I would say so what just because people need it doesn't mean it ought to be free think what it takes to get us a gallon of gas they drill this stuff now in war zones where their lives are at risk the drills go seven miles into the ground they bend they suck the stuff up, they put it in pipelines that cost billions of dollars, put it in ships that cost a billion, hundreds of millions of dollars, ship it to the United States where it has to be refined into th at least three types of gasoline, meet all these environmental rules, and then be put in trucks that cost $100,000 each, and go to gas stations where they have to have all this expensive equipment so we don't blow ourselves up, and 
it costs less per ounce than the bottled water or ice cream that they sell at these gas stations. I'm impressed by that. I think <laughs> the oil companies are frickin' heroes and should be celebrated. And the fact that we need gasoline shouldn't matter. It's, you still need people who will bring it to us, and the price mechanism is the best way to distribute that. I think you're probably one of the best people the Liberty Movement has in terms of communicating complex economic ideas to a wide audience. What advice would you have for folks who are trying to communicate these ideas to a wider audience? How do you do that in a way that's strategic, that's intelligent, but also appeals to a wider array of people than just people who are pumped about uh, Hayek and uh, Milton Friedman? I was not a good student, and I'm easily bored, and that, I think, helped me be successful in television. I felt if I wanted people to pay attention to this, I got to use sound and picture and simple words. You have new opportunities that I didn't have and that no one's had before. Think about the Rodney King beating and what that said, about, what, how that enlightened people about police attitudes, how a few seconds caught on tape, how powerful that is. Anybody can make a video, put it on YouTube.